Welcome to Bison Information Network News. I'm Winnie Wenninger. And I'm Dasha Menzel. We have a lot to cover tonight, so don't go away. Clay Creamery and North Dakota State University's Student Athletic Advisory Council make big food and milk donations to Great Plains Food Bank. It comes as the nonprofit says milk is an urgent need, is one of the most requested items, and not often donated at food pantries. Cass Clay delivered more than 24,000 shelf stable giving cow milks. Great Plains says it will help them, the, more than 121,000 people facing hunger in our area. NDSU's donation is part of the Summit Food Fight Challenge, where schools in the Summit Leagues support local organizations that fight hunger. Cass Clay Creamery General Manager Steve Bowl said, our company is very focused with helping communities, partner with local things like NDSU, and we still feel that it is an important part of the business. NDSU Director of Athletics Matt Larson said, we talk a lot about NDSU and how, about how much our community gives to us, so it's a great opportunity for us to give back. The NDSU Tapestry of Inclusion recently inducted four new members in a ceremony. The honorees were Tyrell Iron Eyes, Shayna Karuman, Jamil Larson, and Holly Mackey. These individuals are known within the campus community for creating a space in which everyone feels like they are accepted and respected as their authentic selves. The tapestry itself is a program run through the Student Activities Office and recognizes those that contribute to diversity at NDSU. Currently, 36% of North Dakota is experiencing some level of drought as drought conditions continue to persist in the western part of the state. NDSU specialists will be hosting live webinars to help livestock producers address drought concerns. The webinars will be held at 1 p.m. on March 31st and April 7th. The webinars will provide North Dakota livestock owners with an outlook on drought conditions, forage production and grazing, while providing management options. The webinars will also provide an opportunity for participants to express drought-related concerns. The first one on Thursday, March 31st, will discuss drought, forage, and grazing outlook, and the other one on Thursday, April 7th, which covers consideration for feeding cattle. To, regi to register for the webinar, visit www.ndsu.edu slash agriculture slash ag hub slash events slash livestock drought outlook webinars. This month marks the two-year anniversary of the COVID-19 pandemic shutting down NDSU's campus. As of March 7, 2022, NDSU dropped its mask mandate in the classrooms, with teachers being given the option to keep the students masked up. Cass County's COVID community level is currently designated as low, but with students coming back from traveling over spring break, it is anyone's guess on if COVID levels will rise again. NDSU recommends that students still follow the CDC's other risk reduction practices, such as getting vaccinated and maintaining social distancing when possible. Now onto our local news front, a North Dakota Army National Guard unit has been informed of a possible deployment. If ordered to mobilize, the Fargo-based 191st Military Police Company will deploy to the U.S. Central Command Area of Operations late this summer. The Guard said in a statement uh, yesterday, Wednesday, March 23rd, about 155 soldiers would be deployed for about a year. The unit is headquartered in Fargo with a detachment in Grand Forks. This would be the third overseas deployment for the 191st Military Police Company and the first since 2012. It is currently unknown where the unit will be deployed. On Tuesday, March 22nd at 7.30 a.m., police responded to a disturbance in which a Fargo woman was allegedly attempting to run over a man with her vehicle and then flee police. Dania Manning sped off, nearly hitting several other pedestrians on the intersection of University Drive and 18th Avenue South when police tried to pull her over. After being arrested, Manning disclosed that she was in an argument with the man that was in their car. He allegedly punched her in the face, and after exiting the vehicle, Manning attempted to run him over several times. Manning was arrested on two counts of aggravated reckless endangerment, felony fleeing in a vehicle, and two warrants. Fargo City Commissioners voted unanimously to move forward with a resolution to dismantle contractual relationships with Russia. The resolution was introduced by Commissioner Arlette Preston, who said this is intended for companies the city has relationships with that are also doing businesses with Russia. She also stated it would not impact other Fargo businesses that have business relationships with Russia. Popular Mexican restaurant Paradiso caught fire on March 23rd around 3 a.m. Firefighters had to cut part of the roof away in order to put out the small blaze. Despite there, be, 
there being nearly $150,000 worth of smoke and water damage in the building, Paradiso reopened today at 3 p.m. with their full menu. The fire is under investigation, but was likely electrical. Coming up next, we have Malik with sports. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. Become a big today. At NDSU, we're going to teach you about how to work with people. We're going to teach you about relationships with people and how to manage those relationships successfully, whether that's at work, whether that's at home. We have majors in agricultural communication, strategic communication, journalism, and management communication. We have students who have graduated who are doing all kinds of different things, everything from marketing to writing content to development to career coaching. We also, of course, have people doing more traditional things like a news reporter or working for TV stations. The faculty members in our department advise undergraduate students. We think that it's important for faculty to develop relationships with our undergrads. We have a advisory board, and that consists of people in the community who are like local business people, and we try to make connections with those people so that literally we know the person that they should talk to about a job. You can't be in the world if you can't communicate. My recommendation is that you take some communication classes at the very least if you can. Even better, do a major in communication. The baseball team had a good weekend after sweeping Fairfield University in a three-game series in the Snowball Classic in Port Charlotte, Florida. Tomorrow they start conference play facing Northern Colorado for a three-game series at 3 p.m. For softball, they had a successful weekend after competing at the Capital City uh, Classic. They played a five-game series, winning four of them against Binghamton, Maryland, Army, and Mammoth. They also start conference play on Saturday, playing the University of South Dakota in Vermilion, South Dakota. Moving on to the women's golf team, they traveled to Sedona, Arizona for the Red Rocks Invitational and placed 10th out of 19 teams. They returned to action on Monday, competing at the Caldona, Caldonia Golf and Fish Club in Pauley's Island, South Carolina. The men's and women's track and field team started competing at the Rayleigh uh, Relays today in Rayleigh, North Dakota. They will be competing until Saturday. The wrestling team season came to an end at their last weekend on day two of the NCAA championships. The Bison placed 34th out of 69 teams. Well, that's all I have for sports this week. Up next, Cole will give you guys a seven day forecast. Stay tuned. No kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. My name is Becky Parker and I'm a news anchor at WDAY-TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting, and mass communication technologies. And then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews, you're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment, it's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. 
gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top of the line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your Bison pride. The MBSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. Welcome back everyone. I hope you all had a great spring break. We've had some amazing weather lately and it's looking like this pattern will continue as we look ahead at the seven day forecast. Starting with tomorrow, we'll have highs right around the 40 degree mark, but we could have a few snow flurries later in the day. Kicking off the weekend, Saturday will have a high of 32 degrees without much cloud cover throughout the day. On Sunday, we can expect a few more clouds, but temps will stay right around the low 30s. On Monday, temps will, ra temps will rise about 10 degrees, but we'll also have some clouds throughout the day. On Tuesday, we have about a 60% chance of rain that could take place in the afternoon. And these showers may transition in the snow as the night goes on, but we won't have much accumulation. The snow showers will continue into early Wednesday morning, but they'll fizzle out by late morning. And finally, to round out our look ahead, Thursday will be a pretty nice day with a high of 45 and a low of 29 degrees. As you can see, we don't have anything too exciting this next week besides the rain showers on Tuesday. However, it will still be a pretty nice week overall, so we do have that to look forward to. We did get a couple of photos submitted to us over spring break that I want to share with you guys. This first photo comes to us from Jan. She was down in Florida for, for, for spring break. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's great to see you representing the bison during your trip. We also have another photo that comes to us from Julie in Carrington, North Dakota. This is a sunset photo that she was able to get the other night. It's a beautiful sky. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. If anyone else has your own photos or videos that you want to share with us, then be sure to submit them online at www.ndsu.com bin.com slash news. Well, that's all for our show today. You can stay up to date on the latest news throughout the week by following us on social media. Well, thank you all for watching and have a great night.